Okay, so here I am with my uh, plectrum banjo again. Uh, it's not that I'm a banjo fan. I don't dislike them either. I just, uh, uh, I'm having a lot of fun with this one right now, and I'm enjoying it. It's kind of a favorite for me to play. And I did build it. Um, I went to a friend of mine named Tom Stimmerman, who shows a great deal of ingenuity with wood, and asked about making a circle, circle out of some hardwood and he had a great idea. We actually made a 12-sided shape out of solid maple and then routed circles on the front and back and of course I made the armrest and then we made the resonator uh, also and I tr tried to incorporate hummingbirds into a lot of my builds and customizations these days. Uh, sentimental reasons. My wife's from Trinidad in the Caribbean and it's called the land of the hummingbird and uh, she's always singing and humming so in honor of the hummingbird I'm married to I'm doing that a lot of times and, um, just a fun thing as a hobby so um, I wanted to talk a little bit uh, you know this is kind of my venue I was preaching and now the videos are much shorter but I do want to talk about scripture and I'm gonna sing a song and, uh, but I, I was thinking uh, you know there's no uh, shortage of pedantic people out there that like to argue theology and um, and get caught up on you know you points of detail and um, I just want to say this isn't the venue for that I, I don't really have an interest in that kind of stuff um, I mean I do I'm a theologian but this isn't where I want to do that and I'm not interested in theological opinions um, I want to talk about Jesus and I want to sing songs and and I want to love doing that um, because I think walking with the Lord is everything. I love the Bible. I just want to spend my days. I like to read the Bible and sing to the Lord and, and just follow his scriptures and do what he says and make it simple. I'm well able to argue doctrine. Um, I just don't want to. Uh, in addition to graduate degrees in psychology, counseling, and biblical archaeology. I, I have three earned doctorates in apologetics, theology, and church history, as well as a bachelor's in pastoral ministries. I read original language, and um, I have four, four decades, almost it's centuries, I'm not that old, four decades of, of ministry. Hearing all that and, and, and making that point, I, I'd rather just share simple truths and sing some songs and let the Lord Jesus speak to people and um, if that doesn't work for someone it's not my problem um, I've found that you can't win argumentative people over anyhow so it's better to just proclaim the goodness of the Lord and and let the Holy Spirit work and and, and deal with people and if they want to argue about it uh, they can do that alone without me. So um, I want to read a scripture, um, first of all, out of Second John, uh, verse uh, chapter 1, uh, verse uh, 9, the, just the first part, 9a. And it says in God's Word translation, Everyone who doesn't continue to teach what Christ taught doesn't have God. And I've long argued that uh, to truly be Christian, you have to embrace all the things that Jesus Christ believed and taught. And, and to be a follower of Christ, you have to actually follow Christ. And that goes with believing what he believes. And, and this can apply in so many ways in our society today. Um, sign seeking. You know, Jesus said, don't seek a sign. Wicked and perverse people seek signs. And so when you start going places and running places to see some miraculous sign, you don't want to admit it, but you're a sign seeker. And Jesus said, don't do that. And, you know, so we, we shouldn't. And he also said, don't pray long, wordy prayers. But we keep doing it and saying it's what he wants. And, uh, you know, one of the other examples, you know, people say, oh, Jesus showed up, you know. I actually had that happen, you know, maybe 10 years ago where a lady said, oh, you should come to these prayer meetings. Uh, Jesus showed up the other day and he was wearing white and gold and blue and, and uh, 
I just uh, said, well, you know, Jesus actually said, if someone says here he is or there he is, don't go after them. And um, I think we need to come back to the simple gospel message that it's not so complicated if we would just do what the scriptures say. And uh, specifically what's on my mind about that is the return of the Lord. That, you know, there are people today who say Jesus isn't coming back. Even in the Bible, there were some that said he already came back. And, and some are saying he's never coming back or he's delayed his coming. And, um, you know, of course, Peter said he's not slack, as some count slackness, but he's not willing that any should perish. And um, the good news is Jesus himself said he was going to prepare a place for us and that he would return. And that is good news. And I can read that scripture in John fourteen three says, if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again. Then I will bring you into my presence that you will be where I am. That is great. He's going to go. He's going to come. And we're going to be with him. And, and then Revelation 19a talks about the marriage supper of the Lamb. And it says, uh, then the angel said to me, write this. Blessed are those who are invited to the Lamb's wedding banquet. And I... Uh, I really see it that way, that, you know, there is an invitation to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And it, it's, we're drawing near to that. And Jesus, in a parable, described the kingdom of heaven as a, as a wedding feast. And, and every, people were invited, and some didn't want to come, and then later others were invited. And then one guy showed up without meeting the dress code. He didn't have the, the wedding garments, which we learn in Revelation, or the righteous acts of the saints. And... Um, all of that sort of thing. But I just want us to be encouraged to know that uh, our reward isn't here on this earth. Our reward is with Jesus. And what makes heaven heaven is that the Lord is there. And that is the best description of heaven I can think of. And so this song was, uh, let me see, I, I made a couple notes about the details. Um, this song I want to do, uh, Come Home, It's Supper Time, uh, was written by Ira Stanfield in 1950. And he was actually inducted in the Gospel Music Hall of Fame in 1981. Um, and uh, it's a, it's a, just a warm song. I, I think I have some sentimental feelings about it. I, uh, my dad was pastor in church. It was probably 1968 or 69. And um, we were, I remember one evening we were there and I was on the platform at this time next to piano playing mandolin and uh, my uh, sisters were singing a special and it was this song that I want to do and, and it was an old, one of them was playing an old upright piano and the other one was standing next to it. Of course they had, one has gone on to be with the Lord. They had beautiful voices and sounded wonderful together and, and you know, not so raspy as I might be but um, it's a it's a very nice warm memory as well as a wonderful hope that uh, our loved ones are there, Jesus is there, and we will be there one day. We just need to persevere. And the, the Bible says, with your patience, possess you your souls. In other words, with your ability to have fortitude and to stay with your in your faithfulness, you will inherit heaven. And it's always like that, faithfulness, 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 fruit. And um, there will be long stands of faithfulness before you see fruit. And the harvest season is often shorter than all the rest of the time. So uh, I'm going to try to do that and, and hope for the best, that there aren't too many mistakes or anything like that.